Ben, we're on, phone, phone, phone. Hi everyone, we're Chutney. Thank you so much to Danira and to Ilan for having us. Uh, thanks for tuning in. What you just heard was Zoom Balga. The Balga is a traditional klezma dance. Zoom is a non-traditional communication method which we've all experienced during COVID. Uh, we too have been Zooming around. Paul and I wrote this, I kid you not, in 20 minutes after a particularly Zoomy Zoom session. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to thank and welcome Paul Cordero, our wonderful dancer I've known for two years and finally get to work with. Thank you so much. The next piece we were told by our friends we had to play if we had to start a band. Uh, it's from a very famous film and we decided to write some music around it as well called Campina. One, two, three. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed that, a bit of fun. There was some old mate Mozart at the end there as well. I should introduce the band. Somewhere on this screen, based on the editor's discretion, will be the rhythm section, Paul Codor on keys, Matt Drury on drums, and Oscar Gross on bass. I'll be here with me, Benny Samuels on clarinet, and also Ben, creative Jewish first names, on violin. And next we have for you Piazzolla's Libertango.
Ben Adler, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Founder and violinist from Chutney. And in case you guys didn't recognize that tune, that is a little ditty that Ben and I wrote for De Niro as the De Niro theme song. So whenever you see that tile come up, it goes, yeah, da, 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 da. and we drew inspiration from Kola Olam Kulo and the Israeli national anthem, Hatikva. How do you feel? Yeah, Leonard Cohen as well. Yeah, Leonard Cohen. Section, yeah. yeah, Dance Me to the Dance End. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we oh, yeah. kind of stole from everywhere, which is what the Jewish tradition has sort of borrowed, in other words, from, from many different places, haven't they? Sure. Like Nigunim from Shepherd Songs and things like that. How are you feeling, man? That was wonderful. Did you guys all enjoy that? It was, it was just... I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you may have heard us commenting on the sound. We hope the sound of us didn't affect the sound that you heard. Regardless, if you're that excited about it, you can always go to the replay section and it will, it will be perfect on there. And so funny that you could hear us actually, um, you know, chatting in the background. Our apologies, kind of our apologies. I mean, yeah. I mean it's this sorry, not page. sorry. Sort of. Sometimes it feels like we're at the beginning of an amazing transformation of technology. And we're just at the beginning of it. You know, we're at the bottom of the mountain with communications on this level, but you know, Improving every week. Mm. Ben, congratulations. It's just so wonderful to know you and to listen to you playing last night with Monsieur Camembert. Absolutely unbelievable and looking forward to so much next week with Chutney. Of Thank course. you. Um, now, before I start asking you questions about the violin and classical music, why don't we welcome Paul, our dancer. Um, Paul Cordero, everyone, put your hands together. We're going to bring one. You grab that chair over there, buddy. And I'll be sandwiched in between two insanely talented dudes. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, if you may say so yourself. Come on in, come on in, come on in. And maybe you move over a little yes. bit. Hello. No, 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 it's in this way, this way. Here we go. Paul, Ben, wonderful collaboration. Absolutely. Yeah. This uh, hadn't even been thought of four weeks ago and then bang, it just kind of all happened. And there you have it, the wonderful product of these guys' imagination. Uh, 
Ben, why don't you tell us, first of all, a little bit about the music, Libertango, and a little bit about the background of it, maybe, or your arrangement, what you did, and then the whole kind of uh, collaborative process that you guys... Sure, sure. Uh, Libertango is written by an Argentinian composer called Astor Piazzolla, who is known as the founder of the Nuevo Tango genre, which I believe he was trained in multiple worlds. He was classically trained. He knew tango from the streets and from his roots. Uh, and he sort of fused a formal and an informal understanding of music and the role of music. Um, it, it was somewhat controversial at times, I think, uh, as he was starting. I think from both ends, there was some pushback in the classical world and there was some pushback also from the tango world. Uh, how could these things be hybridized? Um, the idea of hybrid uh, and of fusion and of uh, collecting influences and just messing with them and enjoying them uh, is very consistent with, with my personal ideology and, and yours and yours mm. and Chutney's as well. Um, You're talking about breaking the rules? Yeah, and just, you know, seeing what happens and putting things together, you know, you, you're not going to kill anyone. Yeah, we're all punks deep down. Who would have thought? Uh, so this is probably his most famous piece. It is a tango, obviously, a libro tango. Uh, and Paul should discuss, I suppose, the, the way he chose to. Yeah, I, th I think what you're saying about, you know, I mean, on, I studied Paul. ballet and, and contemporary and a whole range of other things during my training. And, you know, if you're going to be an artist, it's not just about learning to traditions for me it's like taking it and, and seeing what else we can offer and add to it but respecting where it's come from so um the collaboration was fantastic it was like there was a phone call of like so we've been thinking about doing something of, over a couple of years and it was like let's do this and then it was listening to some music and then right we're gonna get along and do it so it was an intense week of rehearsing mm -hmm. i only called the dancers and asked them if they wanted to be in it like the day before we started rehearsing. fantastic yeah and it was just... right yeah. A credit to, to them for being yeah. able to pick it up. And, Very it. and so what led you to choosing Libertango? You know, obviously Ben showed you a heap of music yeah. and, and then you chose Libertango. Was it the sensuality? Was it the, uh, did you feel that that captured you in some way? Well, I think it's, it's one thing, it's, it's famous, it's a piece that I know. And I, I, I took some tango lessons for, for a while and, you know, I, I love Argentine tango. But um, the other thing is the way you played it. And then we had a discussion and, you know, that discussion fed into the version that they played, which was really beautiful. So I was going to also do something to Cantina, but I just didn't have the time. It has such a strong character and it's really playful. And, you know, it goes through different movements. That was exciting, but they just, I had to put my energy into Libra Tango. So we have a lot of uh, Tango fans out there. We did uh, one of the, the first synchronicity that we did was, uh, was a Tango experience. I know Victor Grimberg, if he's on there, uh, is an absolute tango fanatic and there are others so beautiful beautiful yeah. interpretation although it was unorthodox that's what synchronicity is about you know putting together two different mm -hmm. styles mm -hmm. ben, and, you wanted to yeah we should add like so we played the tango a couple of times at some live gigs and i sent the recordings to paul probably three weeks ago now not, yeah. not much more than that yeah, really not much more than that. And, and yeah i so, said you know we, we did <laughs> some things in this gig some things in that gig but there was a flexibility and a malleability in i hope what i presented to you and then we yes. chatted and, and you were saying as ilan suggested that you feel more strongly or you wanted to explore strongly the sensuality of the tango mm. um, in addition to, again, infusion with uh, the militaristic yeah. heartbeat. That's and right. So you know, it's got the yeah. drive, but then it's also got a beautiful lyrical sort of like passionate sense uh, into the music as well. So you're kind of working on two levels. So, yeah. so when you arranged it, sorry, for, when yeah. he did it for, for you basically specifically in the yeah. recording studio, we thought, oh, let's, let's see if we can make it a little bit more up the ante on the sensuality. Yeah. Uh, so we, we sort of, moved in that direction and, and we like it. I love working with you actually, Ben, on, on that level in the sense that you really do think things through. Um, it's, you, you do have an impulse in your music, obviously, and you do feel things, but you do take others into consideration in the mm. form itself. And I just, I just wanted to say how incredible the last couple of weeks have been. I felt like I've learned a lot just from the way, uh, you know, you've conducted yourself. It's just wonderful. Too I hope to Too have fun. a have a great long musical relationship with you and I hope I can help you in any way. Um, now, just before we say a quick goodbye to Paul, because Ben and I are going to play a couple more tunes and I know that we're running down. And before we say yeah, goodbye to Paul, of course. I just wanted to acknowledge they spent about 20 hours yeah. in three days. Again, 20 <laughs> hours in three days. A, it was, a it lot was of great. It was extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, and and they, they learnt it all and you created nine Yeah, we were creating it whilst we were um, rehearsing it. So the dancers were like, what are we? 
and you know we were all we would have loved an, another hour but i think ben really supported as you said the whole creative process made it very easy you did the lighting yeah, you and, really and directing the other important uh, artistic criteria uh, factor uh joshua marks a dear friend of mine and of chutneys who's filmed us a number of times uh was was behind the camera and so that was all taken obviously in one take on an osmo by a very talented videographer Joshua I Marks. love that crash zoom that you had at one point. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, it, it was telling a story. Yeah, like the music tells a story, the dance tells a story, then the way it's all seen is also a story. Yeah, uh, and yes, yeah, so Joshua Marks of Docker TV. Very grateful to his efforts. Paul, well. lovely, so lovely, so uh, fantastic. I'll I've cherish this this, uh, this experience yeah. now, and I hope that we. Uh, see you in the future and I hope so too. um if there's anything ever that's coming up that you want to plug or anything like that for, in fact now is there anything uh, that you not that, yet yeah but once it opens up we'd happily support you in any okay, way whatsoever right. that's what this is yeah, all about so. So. just stick around the studio i will i will you were gonna say here. before you run away. no just collaborations are great like yeah. this you know it's exciting for me so you know, getting introduced into other processes and other music maybe that i'm not as familiar with so thanks a lot please everyone Thank you, Paul. Paul Cogito. Comment about, comment about, ask questions. We're here to answer them. Now, Ben, before we do play a bit more music, please just talk to us about Chutney. I want to know sure. about this band. Chutney, let's Chutney, jump yes. in. Let's jump in. So, so the potter history of Chutney. Uh, and if you guys are okay to go five minutes over or whatever, I think it's going to lend that. So, you know, it's quarter two, but that's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, a year ago, Limud contacted uh, us via Joshua Drury. Um, well, Joshua Drury was working or volunteering for Limud, asked if I'd like to play for the festival. That's the festival of Jewish ideas, thought, food, music and such it happens annually in some uh, way. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? I was still sort of more deeply in the classical world at that point. Um, but I was, I was opening my mind. And so I said to Josh, who's a clarinetist and a doctor as well, uh, and was our founding clarinetist, um, you know, why, why don't we do something together? And we thought, okay, great, but violin and clarinet are a little bit naked alone. So we thought we'd get my mate Paul Kodor whose birthday, as mentioned, it is today. Happy uh, birthday. Happy birthday, Paul. Joyeux anniversaire. Uh, with whom I played Jewish music for over a decade uh, at Emmanuel Synagogue in Shabbat Live, every week, basically, every Friday, and for the JCA and the JBD and all over the place, Montefiore. And it was a natural partnership. So we, we met a few times and we did some trio rehearsals and, and it was great. We were surprised by how well it was received. We didn't necessarily think that people were that into non-vocal music, musical renditions of, of vocal pieces. Um, and, and then we did another fundraiser for B'nai B'rith about five months later, but nothing was really happening in any particular uh, intensity until about December, when we started thinking, you know, maybe there's potential there. And we added a bassist uh, at that point, and we thought perhaps, you know, we should take it further. So one um, evening, this is a funny story worth Give telling, it to I think, me. Uh, we were leaning around the piano where I live. How do you lean? Uh, we lean casually, we, you know, like Pesach, you know, on one side. Um, when I lean, I lean. You know, and, uh, and we were hungry and we're musicians and we were time poor. Well, some of us are musicians more than others, I suppose, but, uh, and budget poor perhaps. So I just ran in um, the kitchen and got uh, some apples sliced up and crackers. And my housemate kindly, thank you Wallace, had left behind some chutney. She'd left by that point. <laughs> I would never buy chutney. Why would I buy chutney? It's not something in, in my repertoire of things to do or eat. So um, we were just munching on the chutney and we were also munching uh, metaphorically on the fact that we were nameless. We've been wandering for six months in the desert anonymously. We were just that klezmer group basically. And, and then the comment was made, wow, this, this chutney is, is, is really twangy. It's really, I don't know why twangy was a word used. What well, is tangy, obviously. Yeah, twangy, like yeah. it. Yeah. But like, like, you know, I love it. And then it was like, well, why don't we call ourselves the chutney twangs? And then I said, why not just a chutney? And, and Brilliant. within five minutes, we had the name and it right. just sort of stuck. And, you know, it's important to add, we, we love the fact that we're Jewish based and I suppose in some ways Jewish centric, um, but we don't want to be Jewish exclusive and we very much want to spread the music both of, of spread the love Jewishness and also other music like yeah. I mean, Lipa Tango has nothing to do with anything to do with Judaism as far as I'm aware. But there, um, there might be some links philosophically as well. There may be, the music, there, so, there may yeah. be. But, so we wanted to pick a name that, so we're thinking, you know, for the Jews, we could be Chutney. Chutney, <laughs> uh, yeah, you've <laughs> got to be yeah. careful there. Yeah, or Chavoset, you know, was another I, option. I do, yeah. I'm just going to interrupt because there's, there's Debbie Redidis has, who's a big fan of yours, mm. by the way, she says, do you mind if we just quickly lean in here? For sure. And uh, it says, how did you get an interest in the violin, Ben? I'm one of your favorite non-Jewish followers. 
Thanks for pointing that out, Thank Debbie. You. I love all your music. Been following you since Limwood Oz. And you didn't wow. mention Limwood Oz? Yes. Lovely. Yes. Thanks for That's... tuning in, Debbie. Thank you, awesome. Debbie. Lovely that you found us in Limwood. Um, yeah, well, I, I went to a school uh, which had a great music department because it was part of a, a high school, an annual school where I started. And my mother uh, was very keen for me to start on, on a musical instrument when I was in kindergarten, uh, I think just for general education purposes. And having had my sister already pass through woodwind on the flute, I think mum wanted a string instrument, whether it was because it might be a bit softer or whether um, just for a change of, of scenery. Uh, so a string somehow anyway, in my five-year-old mind was, was the parameter. Uh, and as it happens, maybe I should have mentioned the school name, but um, violin and guitar were the main two options. And the guitars were all at that point, lying around the corridor uh, with various parts of anatomy drawn on them and strings missing and things. Um, uh, and, and the violins were over the scene. But I didn't really, yeah, I didn't know what a violin was precisely, but I just knew it wasn't that instrument lying on the ground, sort of half broken. So it was, it was basically the only real choice. And so I started when I was in kindergarten uh, in a group lesson, and soon I started having individual lessons, and it just sort of went from there. Well, you fell in love with it, clearly. And it's so at your peak, uh, you know, is it the sort of thing, obviously, you need to dedicate yourself to the way you play. I mean, it sounds like you've been playing for centuries, <laughs> you know, and you've got such a deep feeling, not just technically, but, you know, perhaps the next song we play, um, you know, can also show. I mean, last night, I was just so blown away, man. You, you're you able to get through passages with seeming ease. <laughs> seeming. And, well, I mean, I don't know. Well, is it? it's obviously still no, tricky for anyone, yeah. but you do it like as though you're not... Uh, you're not thinking and, and you're just feeling and it's so deep in you. It's Thank just you. so deep in you. It's got to be yeah. felt. Uh, yeah, I, I did study at the conservatorium and um, I was lucky to go through a couple of organisations after that, including the ACO, uh, Australian Chamber Orchestra. And yeah, past couple of years, I've been focusing more on improvised music and non-classical spaces, not exclusively either, but it's, it's been a pleasure. And uh, I, I feel like I'm learning and I should, I, I'm learning so much from you. Uh, and from everyone I play with through you as well, all the time. So, I'm just yeah. becoming his stylist, basically. That's about it. You know, what could I, what could I possibly teach you? Um, <laughs> actually, you've got great style, doesn't he? Sometimes. Are you single, by the way, Ben? I may as well just jump to might, the, might still be single. Yeah. Might still be single. So this is on the, uh, on the edge of everyone's... Well, on so many um, grandmas out there, I'm sure, who are watching, Ben is possibly... Definitely lovely. Okay. Which brings us to this lovely <laughs> song. Look, he's blushing. I love it. I love it. Come closer. Yeah, yeah, please, please. My funny Valentine, sweet comic Valentine, you make me smile. Your looks are laughable Unphotographable Yet you're my favourite work of art Is your figure less than green? Is your mouth forever green? When you open up to speak, are you smiling? So don't take it.
if you care for me. Stay, little Valentine. Stay. Each day is Valentine. Studio, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's so lovely to play. So, what are you doing there? Those really high, high pitched lessons. Are they harmonics? harmonics. harmonics. So, so, show us how that yeah. works. Uh, brief lesson. So, yeah. like, the string works. Um, see, I'm just plucking it, and the string sort of moves back and back and forth and back and forth to quickly to see. So, the bow does the same. So, it's pulling the string. They're little tiny, not microscopic, but small hooks. I made a horsehair actually on on the horsehair, and so the horsehair pulls the string and it vibrates. Um, so the note that comes out from the vibration is based, this is so nerdy, my god, um, on no, the length of the go, string. Please. So get all technical and crazy about if it. If I divide the string exactly in half, so if this is the length of the string from where it starts to where it stops here, put in half, then it goes up an octave. So same note. If I divide it again and again. So can you play any note you want, or it is, is it, you, you need technique to be able so, so to play any Those ones note. I just did are called natural harmonics. Natural so it's, it's a half, and then a third, and then a quarter. It's so beautiful. So and then haunting. a fifth, etc. Um, so just the proportions. Um, it's also related to like the golden mean and like the that funny yeah. squid shaped thing. Sacred geometry. Yeah, all the type of stuff. But then if I want to um, create what's called artificial harmonics, Please. and I just artificially stop the string. So instead of having the string stop right here, it's called a nut. I just stop it with the finger, and then I can just stop, or artificially stop. Oh, in exactly the same way that I was stopping here, I stop the string and then lightly press. And then I can play any note I want. And is there a note that actually shatters glass? <laughs> <laughs> the harmonics tend to be quite gentle. Yeah, yeah that's but right. But they do get high. Well, yeah. exquisite, exquisite. Um, which, Brings us to, I guess, you know, next Sunday yes. night, you are playing at Camelot. Now, um, it's fantastic. The environment there, I was there last mm. night. Uh, if you feel comfortable being in a little bit of a crowd, everyone's separated so beautifully. Um, they've done such a great job. Uh, we all got served. We all had a couple of glasses of wine. We all stood up, standing ovation, uh, dancing in our pants. Yaron was fantastic. Um, <laughs> ben was, you know, incredible. Um, so, yeah, so Chutney's there, and there's two sessions. The first one's uh, nearly sold out, if yep. you want to get the early one, but there's the 9 o'clock session. Don't say 9.30. We want them to get there. The 9, 9 o'clock session is, uh, is still, obviously, available. Um, I'm hoping to get there. Um, now, can you watch Camelot online? No, they're not doing anything. Now, before we just play one more to sign off, it's been so lovely having you all. Let's just rewind a little bit and just call it. Oh, which one? Like the whole set. We haven't really. Oh yeah, yeah. Chutney. Yeah. Okay, so, so let's do that. So, <laughs> yeah, the music that we Jump played, we, we, we actually picked them largely um, to show contrast and to give a contrasting array of dance options. And it was great that the Batango became the focus. But so we started with Zoom Balda, and I think the sound may have dropped out there for a minute. Sorry about that. But um, you may have heard this, but if you haven't, uh, that was a piece that Paul and I wrote um, in 20 minutes, actually. Can you after, just give us a little taste uh, of it, that so was, um, again? Yeah, yeah. Just so we remember what you did. Yeah. So, uh, in the style of, of Klezmer Balga, a Balga is a traditional dance form with the... the yeah. Also like the tango, the three and the two, three and the three and the two uh, rhythm. And... Uh, yeah, we called it Zoom because it was deep in COVID and everything was happening on Zoom. And wonderful. And also because the Zoom is along, and we're really happy with that one. Um, the next piece we played was uh, Cantina. So you may have recognised uh, a certain film, the, the wonderful score uh, from a certain film that perhaps you shouldn't mention here. But uh, you can mention it. Well, I'm not sure about the copyright situation. Oh no, you honestly, can mention but... anything you want. Yeah, uh, Star Wars. Yes. John Williams, uh, Cantina Bar film. That was the. Um, Yeah, in the middle. Uh, 
and I wrote just music around that uh, very episodic, like just one idea, another idea, another idea. Then the cantina thrown in there was a bit of a joke. Then another idea, a bit of Mozart at the end. That was um, Rondo El Joker. Yeah, so just bits and pieces sense. all over the place. Uh, as, so as wonderful. Tongue in cheek the entire time. Of course. And it would have been amazing if, yeah, yeah, um, to have tongue in cheek characters. I think the idea was having a broomstick, which would have been so cool. But um, so that was that piece. And wait, then, was that like an animation idea that you just came up with? No, that, that was Paul's really nice oh, idea. Oh, yes, yeah, so you could. Yeah. with the broom or Fred oh, Astaire, you know, playing around with it. The... Fred Astaire with the broom. Yeah, I get yeah, it. I can yeah, see it. Sure. I can see it. Yeah, can see Me it. meant to be totally funny. Um, the next oh, piece, obviously, was the Batango, which we've discussed. And the fourth uh, is Odessa Bulgarish, another Bulgar, uh, which is a, a staple of the Klezmer repertoire. I think it's only about 100 years old or thereabouts. It's written by someone, you know, someone wrote it down. Um, but yeah, we've made it our own and we, we add this big swing New York, New York section in the middle and uh, it's a great tune. So that, that was the music. So that's kind of, those four pieces will be featured next Sunday night among at least half a dozen others, probably seven or eight more pieces, uh, including some more original music. Paul has written a piece about his son or inspired loosely on his son, Leo. Um, I've written a song featuring Eliza Waxman, a uh, wonderful singer. We're gonna have a bit of um, modern Australian rock even if you call the Cat Empire that, it's going to be featured as well, a cover of, of one of their songs. Elisa Waxman is a cherished member of, you know, the De Niro community and the Emmanuel community and lovely, beautiful yeah. voice. We, Can't wait to see we it. We play That's together great. and sing with her, or she sings with us every Friday night yeah. at Shabbat, uh, live at Emmanuel. Uh, yeah, other Klezma classics sort of rearranged. So it's that kind of dancey vibe, as well as mellow moments in between. So it's going to be something for everyone and we're really excited to do it. It's our first like standalone gig, not supporting another band. Uh, like I said, we've almost sold out the first session, which starts at six, six or seven o'clock. Um, but the second session, nine for 9.30, uh, very much still open. We would love to see you there. It's guaranteed to be a great night. And uh, we do have uh, a few beautiful comments, but we're not, we're not gonna race through them now. We just wanna just thank you guys wonderfully. Um, we're gonna leave you with, I think we'll do this one just because it's a gorgeous way to leave and, sure. and it excites me. We, we did have others planned, obviously, tonight, um, but uh, you all need to get back to your Netflix and uh, TV dinners or whatever you're doing. It's been wonderful. Thank you, um, everyone out there, for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and getting on board. Really appreciate you, Ben, and all the people involved in making this happen. Paul, the dancer, and his dancers, the whole of Chutney. Can you just quickly just race off the names of the, of the of musicians course, in yes, Chutney yes. Um, uh, before we go? So, Paul Cotto on keys. Uh, we have Ben Samuels on clarinet, Oscar Gross on bass, and Matt Drury on drums. And the original clarinetist who still plays that sometimes for what we call Unplugged, which is an acoustic style mm -hmm. without drums and bass, is Josh Drury. Great, great. Um, and just so, with yeah. regards to the link, if you do want to book for, for Django Bar at Camelot next week, just find us on Facebook, Chutney, should be enough for Chutney Klezmer if you can't find us there. And uh, yeah, it's all, it's all on Facebook. And now I've just noticed uh, someone post up on the chat. Very good. There's a talk on now. The Sydney Jewish Museum is talks on now. So listen to this last song and then everyone jump over. And uh, also streaming from the De Niro platform. You can see the link there. You can sign up on the De Niro. Yeah, it's not brought to you by De Niro. It's the Sydney Jewish Museum, but you can go there through our platform. So yeah, lovely to see you guys, even though you know, it's just we're looking at ourselves. <laughs> That's the honest truth. written by Hannah Senech, a Hungarian woman who was murdered by the Nazis in 1944. Uh, 
She actually escaped Europe and then went in there, parachuted in there to fight. And no doubt a wonderful woman. Thank you guys. Have a lovely week. Thanks guys.